Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And in this video, we're going to talk about something we uh, don't typically talk about, and that's about eBay and how to sell on it. And in particular, we're going to talk about a program on eBay that you may not have ever heard of. It's called Cassini. We did a blog on it a week or so ago and uh, gave some details. And this is going to be sort of an instructional video on how to take absolute advantage of it when you post listings. eBay has set up some very uh, basically strict rules on a number of uh, criteria on the site and if you don't adhere to them and don't follow them um, eBay is going to punish you for it through Cassini. Cassini is going to look at your listings and it's not going to treat them the way you want and this includes titles. There are absolute do's and don'ts for things to include in a title and we're going to go through them. Things that you should never ever ever put in a title and things that you should. We're going to talk about descriptions, how you should write them, how long they should be, how they should be set up on your page visually. This is all stuff that Cassini looks at and you're going to be surprised at what they penalize people for. Your photographs. Make sure your photographs are sharp and crisp, well lit. I've seen too many people who try to get creative and they create these sort of dark, moody images of their things. Um, Cassini hates those and uh, will not will not treat you very well for it. It also doesn't like overlit pictures and we're going to get into that. It doesn't like blurry pictures and it can detect those as well. We're going to talk about a thing called structured data and this is an area where I think a lot of sellers are missing out on a lot of views and I'm going to explain to you how to use structured data. It's all right there when you fill out your uh, uh, listing but people tend to skip it and they don't understand how much damage it does to their listing and we're going to explain what it does and why you should absolutely use all of it 100% of the time without fail. We're going to talk about timing, when to start an auction, how long an auction should be, what time of day the auction should start. And if you're selling on a global market and you're selling in China and you're selling in Europe and you ship everywhere, um, there is a, a fairly uh, specific time period. Um, and some of you may not like it, but um, uh, mathematically, um, we're going to tell you where and when and all that business. And last, we're going to talk about reserves and pricing and how Cassini looks at reserves and pricing, how it, how it analyzes your uh, reserve and your opening bid compared to other items of similar quality and type and how it's going to rank you all right and you and some people are not going to like it but the, the, I'm going to tell you how it works and we're going to talk about return policies and how Cassini looks at your return policies and your shipping guarantees all of these elements go into uh, deciding how well Cassini treats you it also looks at your seller history in your in your in your feedback rating all right and that plays a fairly minor role but it does play a role all right, and we're going to talk about it all, and um, so stick stick around. Um, I think you'll like this. All right, so here we are. Okay, basically there are seven steps that you should do with 100% of your eBay listings to make eBay's Cassini program react favorably towards you. All right, and they're fairly simple, but there are some absolute rules that you have to stick to, okay? If you've ever seen, you see people that sell things on eBay, for example, and they do really well, and you have the same or very similar thing, and you wonder why yours didn't do as well, the chances are is that they filled out more of the boxes and did a better job with the listing than perhaps you did, okay? It's because it's not just about the picture, all right? First, we're going to start with titles. There's a few do's and don'ts and nevers, and absolute nevers, okay? The first thing you want to do is that when you write a title for a, an item on eBay, you want to write it grammatically for a human being. Cassini is trained to read um, sentences, okay? It is also t uh, trained to ignore uh, keyword stuffing. So uh, keyword stuffing is when people throw in random bunches of words into a title, you've all seen them, that don't make any sense, okay? So write it grammatically. Write it as though you're talking to a person. You're writing for human beings, not for a computer. Do not try to trick Cassini into promoting you by writing just clever titles or that will turn up easily in searches. I guarantee you they won't, okay? And it also has built into it common search terms in every category. So in the Chinese antiques category, the Japanese antiques category, it has certain words that it, that it picks up on immediately once you include them, okay? And it's looking for consistencies there, okay? So if you say Chinese, blue and white, Chin Lung Bowl, 
Okay, it knows what all of those are, and it's going to go, okay, I know what that is. We've had those before. It's also going to immediately go and look and see how much they're worth. It's going to look at the prices that they've sold for in the past, and what you're asking for your piece is a starting bid, for example, or if it's a buy it now, what you're asking for a buy it now price, and they're going to compare those to your, to your titles and descriptions and see if you're being realistic. All right, it starts to make decisions for you the very minute it goes up, and you want it to make good decisions for you, okay? You have 80 letters to use in your title. You don't have to use all of them. Typically, people use 60 to 75 of them, all right? There are certain words you never, ever, 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 never, ever want to include in, in a search title, and those are adjectives. Great, fabulous, rare, museum quality, one of a kind. Those are wastes of space. They do your, they do your listing absolutely no good. Um, as far as Cassini goes, it's not interested in those words. It's looking for specific words that it has in its database already in key search words that it can understand that are reflective of your description down below, okay? So just the facts. Pay the most attention in particular to the first four words of your title, okay? The first four uh, carry about half the weight of the entire title, maybe more, okay? They carry a lot of weight. So don't waste it with saying great, fabulous, and rare. Those are not search terms, okay? They, nobody searches saying fabulous and rare Ming Bowl, for example, okay? All right. Um, the other thing you want to remember, too, is that when you do your description, repeat your title in the description at the top in bold print, okay? And I'll explain why in a little bit, but that's just a little hint of things that are coming up here. All right, good titles look like these to Cassini, okay? And these are a few that, that hit pretty much all the numbers that you want. Chinese, Famille Rose Mandarin, Porcelain, Baluster Vase, mid-19th century. Good, clean title, lots of search words in there, lots of words that people can search for, all right? Or Kangxi period, blue and white, 18th century, porcelain bowl with Chenhua Mark, all right? They look up Kangxi bowls with marks. They look up any one of them, it's going to turn up. Or 19th century Chinese bamboo scholar's object brush pot with figures. All right, all totally searchable, all relevant to your listing. You can put in a clever title if you want, but if it's not relevant to the description below, um, you're going to get whacked for it. All right, bad titles look like this. Fine and rare Chinese famille rose vase with people and flowers, okay? The, 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 in that title, the first three words are completely wasted. All right, fine and rare. None of those are searchable. Incredibly pretty Kangxi B&W bowl from the 18th century, Chinese Qinghua mark. Okay. The problem with that listing um, is that incredible pretty, incredibly pretty is not a search, pair of search words. So that's blown out. The next thing is the use of the, the of this, of B and W, using the B and then right next to it, putting the ampersand and putting W. Don't do that. Spell out blue and white. Blue and white is a much more search term than BMW. Okay, and B and W um, is in the indexes as as a, as a, as, a, as a thing, but it it is not a popular one, and it's very hard to read because B and W is not a word. Okay, um, and when you put in uh, the the uh, the years 18th century, do not press the C up against the H in 18th. Space it. 18th space capital C century, okay? And then the last one is amazing estate found antique carved Chinese bamboo brush pot, 19th century. The only thing in that description that's searchable is Chinese bamboo brush pot, 19th century, and it's a minor element of the description. That should be in the first line. The, the seller here would have been smarter to eliminate the first six words, okay, or the first five words, because amazing estate found antique and carved is, are not search terms. Okay, all right. Never ever put dashes, exclamation points, don't use commas, semicolons, or anything else that breaks up the text. All right, a period after 19th century is grammatically allowed. But anything other than that, forget it, don't do it. And don't put forward slashes in there. And don't include the dimensions in the first part of the sentence of your title. In other words, say 22 inch tall or 22 inch Chinese vase. Take it out. Put it, if, if there's room at the end of the title, throw the dimensions in at the end if you want to because you're probably going to have enough letters left. Um, but don't, don't waste it on that. Okay, it, That is not a search term. People don't search dimensions typically. All right, Put in what people are going to search for. Now on to pictures. 
Um, the big thing with Cassini is that it can see pictures. It can understand photographs. It can detect a picture if it's too dark. It can detect a picture if it's overlit. It can detect in a picture if it's blurry or out of focus at all. And if it's blurry and out of focus or it's underlit, uh, it's viewed with suspicion. Okay, and I've seen a lot of photographs on on eBay. I've, I've probably seen more photographs on eBay than in Chinese category than anybody I know. And I've seen too many that are dark and moody and atmospheric and they have raking light and all that clever stuff. You can do one of those if you want. But what Cassini is looking for is sharp, crisp pictures. And um, when you upload your images, very often most cameras upload with it the camera settings. And, the, and Cassini's going to look at that and see if that matches up. And if it's dark and uh, uh, poorly lit, it's not going to treat you very well. Okay, it, it, it takes only a little bit of time to learn how to shoot perfect pictures that uh, uh, you don't have to edit. Okay, there's an other, another, a few other things that you never ever want to do, and they can all be avoided if you learn carefully how to shoot really good pictures. One is, if you have Adobe or one of these photo editing tools, never sharpen your images and never ever ever use auto sharpening okay the reason is is that on your screen auto sharpening might look great or sharpened might look great but not all screens are the same the screen variance and how things look on screens around the world varies enormously and on your screen a sharpened image or a slightly lightened image might look better to you well did you calibrate your screen is it a new screen all right how does it look on a phone and what you're probably going to find out is, is that on your screen it looks great and everybody else's it looks lousy. And Cassini can sense a sharp, sharpened picture and they're wondering why you're editing your pictures. Same thing with adding light. Um, if you have to slightly light adjust it, that's fine. But in general, I don't recommend it. Okay, Use raw pictures and just you know get them to the size you want. And when it comes to size, the optimal size, for example, the default setting on many cameras is around 1216 by 912 pixels. That's one of the default settings. That's a good size photograph. 1,000 by 1,000 is a good photograph, 900 by 900 even. But don't go much below that, okay? Um, you want it to be able to be blown up nice and big. And you want to use lots of pictures. Cassini wants to see, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pictures. If you put up one picture or two pictures, top and bottom, um, you're not going to do very well. They're not going to give you much attention, okay? So learn how to take pictures, um, uh, read your user's manual if you have a good manual camera, learn how to do macro settings, adjust f-stops, shutter speeds, and ISO settings. And that's about really all you need to know, all right, and white balance. Uh, otherwise, put it on manual and use photo lights, okay? On indoor lighting, never ever shoot your images under normal indoor household lights or fluorescent lights. Don't use incandescent lights. Don't use, you know, the regular table lamp lights that, uh, uh, that you know, that people have that do. The reason is they don't have enough lumens in them and they, the camera's looking for lumens. It looks, it's looking for a light spectrum of light to draw from in order to create your picture. And if you don't have the right kind of lighting, the camera's gonna uh, have a hard time, even on automatic settings, to uh, interpret the image. Okay, so don't do that. And I'm going to show you something here. This was a, a really classic case of bad photography. Um, the, the jar on the left and the jar on the right are the, exactly the same jars. The one on the left was shot indoors. The guy uh, apparently took, um, and it was a very good jar, as you can see. Um, he, he took a table lamp, apparently popped the, the shade off of it, shot a picture of it. And uh, for one thing, the, the, because of the curvature of the lens of the camera he used, it, he was too close, it distorted the image. So the jar looks sort of, you know, like it's expanding upward and it's distorted in shape. The one on the right is what it looked like after we bought it. We bought this jar and um, re-photographed it right away uh, for a customer. And uh, you can see the difference. They, they look night and day different. They are exactly the same jar. They're exactly the same. Um, had he used the one on the right, um, I wouldn't have been able to have bought it on eBay as a buy it now at a ridiculously low price. All right, somebody would have grabbed it immediately. But the photo on the left was very, very uh, um, confusing to people, okay? Now, um, now I'm gonna show you something. We're gonna talk about outdoor lighting. Um, if you don't have a good lighting setup inside, don't be afraid to take the thing outside. If you have a back porch, a picnic table in your yard with sort of a neutral background, nobody cares. Nobody cares 
where you shot the thing as long as it's not shot in front of a pile of trash cans or something, you know, common sense. All right. I know a guy, there's a guy out there that we, we, we feature regularly in the newsletter. He shoots a lot of stuff on the hood of his car. He has a black hood and he shoots jewelry on it all the time. And the stuff looks fabulous and you can see it nice and clear and he gets really good prices. He gets very good price results. All right. This was a jar that we shot outdoors. It was for an auctioneer friend of mine a couple of years ago had this. And I was helping him uh, get some information to some customers uh, that might be interested in it. And uh, he wasn't really set up to take pictures. So I just took it outside, put it on the porch um, of his house, and stood with the sun over my shoulder. As you can see, it's sort of the shadow goes off to the right. I was using a not an expensive camera, a $300 or so camera, set it on automatic, and just took these pictures. And the camera did a beautiful job, as they're set up to do, in natural light. And it's good, it's crisp, it's clean. Um, you can see the depth of the cobalt, everything you want to see. All right, That is a better picture than a lot of pictures you see that people shoot inside, um, um, you know, trying to use table lamps and all kinds of things. So they have an underlit photo tent with good lighting, which I never understand. But at any rate, that's what you want. That's the kind of thing you want to do. All right, so make sure the picture looks like the object, in other words. Okay. Item descriptions, okay? This includes not only the description, but the size and the condition report and all that business. The first thing I want to mention is, is that eBay provides at the top of every listing, when you're filling it out, a box that says condition. Don't ever write in it, see below, and then put the condition down, in the, down below in your description. Do it in both places. All right, the reason is, is that if there's a problem with the buyer down the road and he says it's not as it looked in the pictures or it had a repair that you didn't illustrate or that you didn't mention, all right, he can say that even if it's in the description down below because you didn't fill out the condition box. You have to fill that out. You absolutely have to, okay? The other thing is, if you say see below or something else, Cassini looks at it and said, well, that's not a condition report, that's a direction. And it, it gives you a little bit of a knock for that, okay? So you don't want to do that. So write in the condition box, the condition of the piece, exactly as it's going to appear in the description, and then copy it and, of course, add it down in the description below. And then Cassini will look at your listing, and the two places where the, dis the condition is reported are exactly the same. It gives, the, the, it gives Cassini confirmation, okay? Because what, what this computer program does is it looks for consistency of your description, of your title, of the categories you're putting it in to validate that this is really what it is, okay? So make sure you do that. The next thing you want to do is... Um, Cut and paste the title of your listing into the description box at the top. Put it in bold print and then skip down and your descriptions should be never more than a couple of paragraphs and they shouldn't contain more than maybe three sentences in each one. So basically six sentences. Think carefully about it before you write it and 99% in of the time you can cover all of it in that. All right. Uh, do not center your text ever. Do not write justify your text ever. Always left justify. Always to the left, okay? And the reason is, is that Cassini knows and anybody that's looked at centered text before knows it's hard to read. And Cassini says, oh no, they're using centered text, it's hard to read. Uh, that's not a good quality listing. Justify left, don't, don't do anything fancy, use a simple font. Use Arial, Garmin, Times Roman, all the standards, okay? And just as an aside, uh, they did a study on fonts a few years ago. Um, uh, serif fonts, for example, are considered to be more credible by readers than Arial or non-serif fonts. Um, serifs are those little doohickeys that go on the tops and the edges of letters. Um, they, they, they did a study on it and they found that people reading the exact same articles but in those two different fonts uh, took as more credible the one done, done in the serif fonts. Typically, it's a uh, garment of Times Roman. That's just an aside, okay? All right. Um, and then after you do your two paragraphs of your description, skip down and put in dimensions. Do not include your dimensions inside your descriptions. Do them separately, put them below, make them nice and clean, easy to see. Just dimensions, semicolon, and the number. Okay, height, width, whatever, however you want to do it. And below that, put in condition. Or you can put in condition and then dimensions, but keep them separate from the general text, okay? Do not write lecturous descriptions. You know, uh, don't, t don't tell the people, um, you know, uh, how rare and amazing this is and, 
you know, go on and on and on. And if you miss this, you're really missing out and all that. Sounds like you're begging. Don't. Let the pictures stand on their own merit. Let the images uh, carry the day with a description that matches those images, and you'll be in good shape, okay? Down below that, if you want to add any boilerplate of any kind, you can certainly do that. Okay, now, uh, duration of the auction. This is extremely important. Uh, some people think they can just throw up a listing on a Wednesday afternoon, and that's it. Well, if you're selling on a global market, which eBay is, in particular with Chinese and Asian art, it is a totally global market. The idea is you want to get the most exposure you can globally during the time of the sale. And here are the basic rules. If you really want to get full exposure all around the world for the best, uh, most optimal amount of time, only do 10-day auctions. 10 days, period, no exceptions. Start every auction, preferably on a Thursday night or, if you can't do it on a Thursday, a Friday. Do not start listings on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay, those days are out. Start them on Thursdays or Fridays. When should an auction end? Um, I know some people in different parts of the world, like I like this, if you're in Germany, you probably want to close at eight o'clock in Germany or, or you know, six o'clock your time in the UK or seven o'clock your time in the UK. Um, unfortunately, uh, statistically for Asian art, the optimal um, starting time, which is also the ending time, 10 days out in this case, is seven to 9 p.m. in that window um, Central Standard Time in the United States. The reason is, is that the majority of stuff that sells on eBay in the Chinese and Asian art uh, categories sell to either buyers in the United States or to buyers in China and Asia. 7 to 9 p.m. Um, uh, evening time here in the U.S. is 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, in the morning in China. A lot of people that buy in China are on the internet starting at around 5 in the morning. To by, by 8 or 9 in the morning, to them, that's the middle of the day, all right? And, and you'll get a good response from that. And you'll also have people in the EU, of course. But uh, the EU is, is not a heavier buyer in dollars and total gross sales as the U.S., uh, the United States, Canada, Australia, China, Japan. And, that, and those are the markets you want to be aiming your, your uh, listings at in particular, provided you ship uh, internationally. And if you don't ship internationally and you're selling Chinese stuff, you're really missing out, really missing out, okay? All right, starting bids and reserves. <clears throat> this is very important. Cassini looks at starting bids and reserves by weighing out your description and your titles and what you've put into your listing against its own price history. And it's going to look at those. And one of the things that it loves the most is a low opening bid and no reserve auctions. Low, low opening bid, no reserve auctions get all the love. They get everything, okay? And the reason is, is simple. If you have a good item and you put it up with a very low opening bid, you are going to very rapidly get bids. You're very rapidly going to be put onto watch lists. You're very rapidly going to have people coming back to look at your listings. You're going to have listings that get shared, and you're going to get bids on bids on bids on bids right away, right in the first 24 hours, the first day or so. And when I mean low opening bids, I mean under 10 bucks. Okay? We historically, when we've sold on eBay, um, and we've sold uh, millions of dollars worth of stuff on here, um, and we've sold single items for into six figures. Um, every one of them started at five dollars or less. Uh, we've never started a high-end item um, at any sort of high number. Never, never. They've always been under ten bucks. I think maybe for a while we did them at nine ninety-nine, and this includes single items that brought you know seventy, eighty, ninety thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars. All right. If you title them properly, you you hit all the uh, fill out all the boxes properly, the market will see them and you'll do just fine every time. Okay. All right. The other thing is too is that the more bidders you get, people placing bids, there's a psychology to bidding, and once a person places a bid on something, uh, a sense of ownership kicks in. They begin to think it's uh, as theirs, that it should be theirs, and they think about it more and more, and, th and then they want it more, and you you end up getting uh, a lot more people interested in buying it, and they're, they're, they actually start to fight to keep it, okay, because they sort of think of themselves as already having it. All right. And one of the things I wanted to now go into very quickly was um, the uh, eBay uh, form itself. Um, and before I do that, I want to show you something about. Um, uh, OK, this is what I wanted to talk about first before we get over to the eBay form. Um, you'll notice on the left hand side of the screen here, and you've seen them all before, this list of things, primary material, age, type, color. 
uh, and so forth. Okay, this this is that's all the structured data that eBay is looking for. And a lot of folks, when they fill out their uh, submission forms to create a listing, they don't bother filling out these uh, the, the form. And what it means is that if somebody comes in here and clicks pre-1800 or clicks vase or, or whatever, whatever the particular is, your item will not be included in that search for that filter. These are filters. And they account for a big, big part of the starting point for a lot of eBay buyers, okay? They use these, these, uh, this area of the site to, uh, to find out, um, you know, uh, you know how, how to shorten their hunt. Because right now, there are, you know, there's, there's seven or 800,000 listings on eBay in the Chinese category, all right? So when you get the form, here's the form. All right, this is the uh, listing form that everybody, if you sell on eBay or if you haven't sold on eBay, this is what it looks like. And it's very simple. Selling on eBay is not difficult. All right, it's difficult to do well, but, but if you pay attention to the rules, you're fine. Okay, the top of the page, you have title. All right, and in here, I just threw in a title for that, uh, that Wanley uh, jar I looked at earlier that was shot on the back porch. And then you scroll down to here, and you have condition description. This is that condition box that eBay provides that you absolutely must fill out. All right, so fill it out, type it in here, okay? They give you plenty of room to type it out. There's no limit in space. All right, and then add all your pictures, uh, 8 to 12 at least, good pictures, focused, well lit, you're in good shape, okay? And down here is your structured data. This is what Cassini is really looking for. This is a very powerful part of your listing, extremely powerful, and I'm stunned at how many people don't use it. It's absolutely amazing to me. Um, uh, this is the structured data part. This is a, an essential section of how eBay looks at your listing and filters it. Color, primary material, if it's porcelain, it'll be on this menu, you drop down menu, put in porcelain. Region of origin, China or Japan or wherever it's from. Maker, if you don't know, just put uh, uh, China. Age. All right, and on here there's a list of uh, ages. Um, you can change those by adding them below. I don't recommend it. All right, like this will, you could you could pick pre-1800 or 1900 to 1944, that sort of thing. All right, occasionally you'll see somebody that's typed in an age range. The problem with that is that, that age range doesn't necessarily align with their uh, uh, filter boxes that they provide on the pages. So, you know, get it as close as possible to the age from the menu they provide you and then add it uh, a more precise age in your description is the smartest way to do it. If there are other item specifics that you think are important, you can add them there if you wish. All right. And then down here is your item description box. Very simple. Cut and paste, as I mentioned before, the exact title in here. That's confirmation for Cassini. It'll say, ah, the title and this. And he said it was a, a vase. And he checked off, uh, you know, vase up here, okay, and then go down, put in your uh, your two paragraphs of uh, description, aligned left, justified to the left, your uh, dimensions, the condition report again, exactly as it's stated up above, so it shows up twice. Cassini again will look at it and get confirmation out of it. You set up your 10 days, 10 day auction under duration, starting price, keep it as low as humanly possible. As I said before, under 10 bucks if you can do it. All right, it's not for everybody. It's, it's, it makes people, some people nervous, okay? And then down here at the very bottom, um, there's a thing in here about ship uh, on your account. You have a thing that says uh, uh, whether or not you accept returns, for example. Um, if you don't accept returns, you're going to get dinged for it um, uh, because you have to accept them anyway, basically. You know, so you might as well say you accept them. Cassini likes that. And as far as the shipping times go, pick as short a shipping time as you can possibly deal with and uh, then submit your listing. And you'll be in pretty good shape starting on a Thursday, 7 to 9 p.m. Central Time, U.S. And uh, follow these basic rules. You'll be in, you'll, it'll work out for you. We have a blog um, over on the site that mentions all of these points. And um, we'll link this video over there once this is done. So if you need to come back and get a refresher, please do. Uh, study it, study it, study it. Uh, until you get it all, fill out all of the all of the structured data boxes. Use clean titles, and and uh, you'll you'll probably see a pretty good result uh, for your listing. And and if you've been wondering why your friends do so much better than you do, or other people with similar things do better, this is probably why. All right. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We do a video every week, and uh, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up. We love those. 
and uh, leave a comment. If you want to see more of these, um, we can do them. Um, I've thought about doing these for a while on, on, on how to sell better on eBay because we, we know quite a bit about it. And um, let us know what you think, okay? And uh, have a great week, and we'll be back Friday with our regular video. All righty. Thank you, and uh, goodbye.